Right, so the key thing we've got to remember is the stack is a recording system and it rec keeps a memory for us. Okay? And it, we couldn't actually run subroutines without the stack. You could implement this loads of different ways, but the stack is the best way to implement actual subroutine call structures. Most languages will have a limit on it. And that limit will be defined, well, not necessarily, sometimes by the language, but it's mainly by the operating system. I think what, we did an experiment last year, and it was about 15,500 consecutive calls that you could do. So the operating system had allocated enough space for that program to do sub A, call A, call A, call A, 15,000 times on the trot. And then it went, whoa, out of stack space, stack overflow. Alright, so in reality this system, there are limits to it, you can't have an infinite amount of space. Right, so as we get to a subroutine call, we've got to put the parameters on and the return address. Alright, so we're going to put the return address, so for the first one at 101, this might not be how it's physically implemented in assembly language. Some implementations might do it the opposite way around, they might put the parameters on first and then the return address. But that's down to the implementation by the compiler. Okay, so we'll, but we're doing it this way just for simplicity's sake. So 101 goes on, then we need to put the parameters on in reverse order. So we put the 10 and we put the 15. Okay, then we can go off and we can execute the code for subroutine N, which is at line 200. Okay, yeah. So that's the definition line, X and Y are the two parameters. That's what the person who wrote that subroutine decided to call those parameters. So we get to line 201 and we're told to call a subroutine. And it says call the subroutine B with the parameter value X. So we have to look up what the parameter value of X is before we can call that subroutine. Alright, so remember what we said we look down the stack based on the parameter position. So parameter 1 is 1 from the top of the stack in this example. So if we go back 15, looking at what we had originally, yes, 15 was the one, that, one down from the top of the stack. Okay? With stacks, we're always pointing to the next free space. When we look at the algorithms for push and pop, explicitly you'll see that that's what we build it into. Right. So we're going to use that 15. So where we said x, we actually mean the value that's the first parameter on the stack. But before we call it, we need to record the return address. The return address is going to be 202. So we put that on the stack first. Then we put our value, which was 15. Okay. Then we can go off and run the subroutine B. Notice how all we're doing is we're building the stack up in this first part. Yeah. So B at 300, parameter has been called P by the programmer of that subroutine. And we're going to run or call the function C with the value P plus 5. P is a value 1 down from the top of the stack, so it's that one. We're going to add 5 to it, so we're going to get 20. All right. But we need to put the return address down first, 302. Okay. Then we can put our value on, so that's 20. Then we can go off and run subroutine C, which is here, which doesn't do anything. Okay, so it doesn't do anything. So, some mysterious lines of code, and then we get to this line, end sub. So we return. So we pull off our parameter value. Okay, we discard that. That was T, so there was one. And we got our return address. So we go back to line 302. Here. So I've taken two values off the stack. So I'm going to redraw my stack. So I've got 101, oh my god, it's bad. Oh. 10, 15, 202, and 15. Yeah, everyone happy with that? No, what not made a mistake, that? I haven't cocked it up. Why did you do that bit again? This bit? No, big, yeah. What, redraw it? Yeah, that, that bit I redraw it. Because I've removed those from the stack, this would start to get really messy if I were to add something else on 
I start adding them here. So I've like gone cleaned off the stuff that's been removed. So I discarded the parameter value and I got my return address. So they've come off. So I've gone, right, draw the stack out, it's clean now. When I add the next thing, I'm just sticking it there. Because it would get messy, Ben, if you started putting like cross that off and then later on you add two or one. You would actually find it very difficult to see if you went wrong. Alright, so don't ever do that. You'll see when we do the reverse polish that if you don't do it this way, you will drop yourself in the right mess. Okay. Right, so we've come back to this line, because that's the return address, but this is another subroutine call. We're passing a parameter to subroutine E of 10. The return address this time is 303. The parameter value, there's only one, is 10. Okay, as soon as we've done that, we can go off, change the program counter so we go to this subroutine. Okay, parameter A is mysteriously used. We don't know what it's used for, we don't care. We get to the end subline, we say, right, okay, we need to go back to the previous bit of code we were executing. But before we do that, discard the parameter value. If you forget to do that, it's all going to go horribly wrong. So we discard the parameter value, pick up the return address, we now know we're going to go to 303. So I've removed some stuff from the stack, so I'm going to re-draw the stack. So I'm now back here, which is the end of the subroutine. Okay, this subroutine have one parameter. We need to discard that value and pick up the return address, 202. So I'm going to redraw my stack. The nice thing about stacks is they're quite easy to see what the last number was you took off. Because it was the last number you crossed out. So I'm back at 202, which is this line. 202. Oh, end of the subroutine. This subroutine had two parameters. I need to discard those two values. So discard, discard, pick up the return address, 101. The stack is now empty. If I then find an end subline somewhere in my code, there is something fatally wrong happened. Okay, 101. So I'm back to execute that. And that's it. And that is the basic process of, not how it actually physically works, because the compiler writes all this code. Okay, but that is the, the basics of the call structure on the stack. Okay, stacks are great because they are a membrane system. If you want to like solve mazes, stacks are very helpful for recording. So if you got to a location in a maze, say in a maze like this, the world's most complicated maze, well, it is the way I'm drawing it anyway. <laughs> it's nearly the last swastika. Apologies. That, well, it's not really. Right, so if I started here, obviously, okay. if I was following this maze round, I have no option. Do you know what? You know, have you ever, anyone been to the maze at Leeds Castle? <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been to that, and I was walking around it, and I was like, yeah, I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> Halfway around, I thought, no, nah, I don't think I can. So what I did is I just like, hung around a bit, and then I waited for someone to get lost, and they went, I'm lost, I'm lost! And then there was a geezer in the centre, and he was directing us. So what I then did is I pretended to be just looking around and followed this person all the way, and I did it. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. <laughs> well, that's how I solved mazes. Wait for someone else to get <laughs> stuck. you cheat. <laughs> Technically, I wasn't cheating, because I actually solved the maze. No, you were following I didn't ask for any help. I didn't ask for any help. I, nev I never received or asked for help. So by definition, I solved the maze. But anyway, right, I have to go this way. But when I get here, let's say I don't know, what, don't know what's down these routes. When I get here, I've got three choices. Now what I need to do is explore all the choices to see if one of them's a dead end. But I need to remember I got to that junction. So I could use a stack to do that. And then I could go off. But it might have been that there was another junction. So I might need to record that to say actually there's further places I can explore off that junction. So stacks can be used for this, for doing like searching. Okay. Right, okay, I'll stop my vid.